Well, one of the things I realized for sure at 14 when I was screen printing is there was no difference in the t-shirt, whether it said Nike on it or Louis Vuitton or Tommy Hilfiger or Walmart. It was the same shirt. And it didn't cost any more money to print Louis Vuitton on it than it would have to print Walmart on it. Exactly. And, and maybe there is like a small, tiny difference, but it's really tiny. And I, I'm not big on, on brand names, but out of my curiosity, I was checking out some of those uh, big fashion uh, stores. And I, I don't remember if it was Balenciaga or Louis Vuitton. And it was like $1,000 for a t-shirt that just blew me away. Yeah. And blew me away. And it's the same t-shirt, as you say, like it's exactly the same t-shirt. And we're back for another episode of The Startup Puzzle. This is your host, Matt Watson. Excited to be joined today by James Bertigans, who's the founder and executive chairman of Printify. My goal today by the end of this episode is set up our own merch store. I think James is going to help me do it. Full scale, Startup Puzzle logo. We're, we're going to have it printed on everything. And uh, he's got some cool technology that would enable us to do that. Uh, lots of companies are, are using his, his software and his service to sell all sorts of stuff with your logo on it. It's a really cool, fascinating story today. Excited to get into it. I do want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Fullscale, which is my company. If you need help building your development team, hiring a few developers, we can help you do that for 60 70% less from our team in the Philippines. You can check us out at fullscale.io. James, welcome to the show, man. Uh, hi, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. Now, we're recording this on February 5th, and I'm from Kansas City, and it says here on my bio sheet about you, San Francisco. So I don't want it to be any bad blood about the Super Bowl. Is your guys' company based in San Francisco? Is this going to be a problem today? <laughs> Um, so, so no, I, I think it's not problem, uh, in that specific regard. Um, we have actually our headquarters are in Europe, uh, specifically in, a, in a country called Latvia, where we have most of our engineering and operations people working from. However, we do all the production and manufacturing in the United States. We have over 100 manufacturing locations majority of which is located in the United States. All right. So so tell me, how did you guys get started doing this? You've been doing this for quite a long time now. I think here, I read, read here you guys have helped print millions and millions of different products. How, how did you come up with this idea? How did you guys get started with this? I got into this by... Um, tr trying to sell online myself um, and actually before this I uh, um, I had a business of selling physical products uh, where we had to carry inventory and I learned the painful way uh, how in having inventory can drive you out of business uh, especially when you are just starting out you don't know how much of product you will sell you have to produced in large quantities and if you don't sell out well then you try to discount the products if you can't sell them on discounts so that is pretty much all, all of that is your loss and that was my case uh, we were selling in price electronics uh, and some apple uh, retailers uh, stores uh, accessories for apple products and and bags and cases okay. for the Apple MacBooks and uh, yeah, we we had way too much inventory. We were back in that day. My company was producing products in India and China, and minimum order quantities were quite sizable there. And <clears throat> due to unsold inventory, the business uh, went well. We went out of business, and that led me to do something uh, with less inventory. I the on-demand production or specifically print-on-demand was uh, a new terminology back then. And I thought that I would um, just easily find a factory and that would start producing for us. However, after finding a factory, I realized that there are quite few software components that need to be in place uh, to make it work uh, really easily. Integration with e-commerce channel like Shopify, 
easy product uh, and image creation, then posting those images and product listings on your e-commerce channel, as well as very importantly, the after the post order experience. So managing the orders after uh, the sale has happened. <clears throat> So I started to automate those steps uh, for my own business. And in the process of doing that, I realized this is real painful. It's a problem. And most likely there are thousands of other people uh, out there who are experiencing or will experience the same problem. So by having problem myself and solving the problem for myself, uh, I realized that there is an opportunity to solve it for other people and started uh, focusing on that software component. And that's really the beginning of Printify. Well, a lot of entrepreneurs start that way. They, they have an idea, they're, they're trying to do something themselves and they can't figure out how to do it. So they decide to start a business doing it. One of my good friends was was on the podcast a couple weeks ago and he start, his company ended up um, building custom outdoor cabinets. He was trying to buy outdoor cabinets. So realized there was no easy way to do that and started a cabinet company. You know, it, it's amazing how many entrepreneurs start businesses that way because they're just trying to solve their own their own problems. And actually, full scale, that's how full scale started. I needed to hire software developers in the Philippines and realized it's like, man, if this works really well for me, it would probably work well for other people. And so this that's one of the great things about the entrepreneur spirit. So my first job I ever had was doing screen printing. I did screen printing for for t-shirts and stuff. I was 14 years old. I made four dollars an hour or whatever um and i imagine the only way that what you're doing today works is because the old way of screen printing has somewhat been replaced by more digital presses right because the amount of labor it took us to build those silk screens and put them on the machine and clean up the silk screens and do all this i literally did that it was a lot of work so I imagine a big key to this has been all the digital presses that are able to do all this stuff more dynamic, right? So all the different kinds of gadgets or you know, stuff Absolutely. you would get at a trade show, all that kind of stuff is all printed on a more digital type of press now, right? That doesn't require all this, the screen setup. Exactly. I love that you have personal experience in, in this industry. Um, you, you are point on. So <clears throat> historically, um, the, there was quite a setup cost to start printing a new design due to the fact that you would need to create a new screen uh, for every, every new design. And that is quite costly process. Yeah. With the new technologies, specifically direct, digital direct to garment printers, Imagine like a big yeah. office um, jet jet type of printer, inkjet printer. And however, instead of printing on paper, it's printing directly on the t-shirt or hoodie. And so <clears throat> there are a couple of other steps of drawing the product and, and to make sure that the ink holds on very well. But thanks to modern developments, uh, we are able to print every single order, every t-shirt with different design. And as a Which conversion, so yes, we, we ship millions and millions of packages and our average order size is between one to two items. So on most of the, most of the orders have only one or two items. So there is really no min, minimum order yeah. quantity. Every order gets a different design and also a bit different thing that uh, you, you started off uh, the, the podcast by saying, enabling to print uh, your company logo on the t-shirt. That's actually a very small part of our business. Our core business is enabling entrepreneurship, enabling anyone who has some creativity of either they come up with new design or they are they know some target audience very, very well, or they are an influencer and they have an idea of creative designs and how to monetize their in uh, their followers or how to target specific niche uh, category and <clears throat> they can put on those designs and sell them on shopify etsy uh, ebay um, uh, tiktok we launched recently and <clears throat> when the end ca uh, customers are buying those products 
uh, we will be in the back end producing and drop shipping directly to the end customers and putting the branding of the seller on the package. So for the end customer, it will look like the package came from the seller uh, that they bought it from directly. It's just still so incredible to me that you can run a business that way that at the end of the day, you're shipping one coffee mug or one shirt or one ball or whatever it is like that was custom printed. Like, it's just really incredible that the everything has become so efficient, right? Every, there's so much efficiency in, in this part of it that they can, you know, take like for Christmas, we got a bunch of our employees uh, custom headphones and we had the mm-hmm. company logo printed on the, the charging brick or whatever for it. And it was just and it didn't even cost anymore. It was almost like free to have that printed on there. Like it was incredible that all of this has become so streamlined. However, you guys do all this kind of stuff behind the scenes. It's really incredible that the the way that you have solved that and enabled a guy like me to just print our logo on there and give it to our employees. So it's, it's incredible. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's actually what you mentioned is a slightly different and, and even easier use case. Because if you have, let's say... 50 or 500 employees, you know exactly how many yeah. orders you need and you know exactly that you will give the same logo to everyone. So it's e- easy to make a yeah. batch order. However, with e-commerce, it's a lot more challenging because you might be selling, let's just imagine one t-shirt. It comes in seven different sizes, 10 different colors. That's 70 different yeah. variations. There is no, and, yeah. and then imagine you have 20 different designs. That's like 1400 SKUs, if I got my math right. So there is no way you you will guess correctly how many extra small pink specific design you will sell. So yeah. with this type of technology is on demand, print on demand. We are enabling anyone to really start their own business risk-free. I, I really don't want any entrepreneur to end up in the situation where I was to that they need to go out of their business because they had too much of unsold merchandise inventory. That was my painful experience and it's, it's, it's not a great one. So then if I was going to sell startup hustle t-shirts and wanted to use your guys' platform to help do that. So would you guys have that catalog of all the different kinds of, of merchandise that I could put the, the logo on and, and all that, like you have, hundreds or thousands of things to pick from. And then I would pick the five I actually want to do and then build exactly, my store exactly. around that. How, how does that so work? We have, we have the largest product catalog online of about 1,000 on-demand produced uh, different items, uh, products. And when I say 1,000, each of those items potentially uh, contains multiple sizes, colors, so um, or and variations. So there is a a lot, lot more. And we are every month, we are adding uh, many new products. For example, in the coming months, we are launching consumer packaged goods category, which is uh, completely new for us. So additional to our existing products of T-shirts, of clothing products like T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, um, ball art, uh, like wall decal, canvases, um, pillows, um, bedwear, swimwear, pretty much anything you can think of that can be printed. Uh, on top of that, we are launching consumer packaged goods category that I'm very, very excited about. So we will be enabling uh, sellers to sell <clears throat> their to their audiences, to their followers, things like uh, packaged coffee, uh, supplements, um, and cosmetics products. So a lot more exciting products coming. So you're, so you mentioned you have over a hundred partners that, that print all this stuff. So each one of those partners specializes in printing one of these different kinds of, of goods. Yes. Yes. And, and that was one of my learnings that motivated me to, uh, to create this marketplace. Um, or, or this platform was that uh, I, I saw that it happened so that in every industry there are 
players that specialize on a specific product and because they specialize on that specific on one product they auto they can automate processes they can become better than anyone else they gain more volume they gain economies of scale that enables them to further automate the processes and so as a merchant you want the best products in terms of quality speed price and so on in every category and through this one platform that's exactly what we allow is to easily to connect to the best producers in every category if it's home decor or if it's wall art or if it's clothing products or consumer packaged goods we will be offering you the best suppliers in this industry that are vetted and we are ensuring that the quality and delivery standards are are met so I understand I could use your guys' platform to help sell, you know, startup hustle t-shirts and maybe I sell one a day or whatever. But would I also use your product, your your guys' platform, if I wanted to go order 300 shirts, one for every one of our full-scale employees? Could I use it for that too? Yes, absolutely. You can do that for that too. Um, but the real magic where we are focusing on uh, is e-commerce enabling entrepreneurs to easily start their own business? Uh, many started side hustle, and we have been, we are supporting some businesses that are doing millions of dollars uh, per year in sales and making very and these are very lean companies with small teams uh, running very lean operations, and uh, we are their backend enabling their on-demand uh, print on demand capability. So what, what were some of the biggest challenges you had to solve for as you were trying to build this technology Did, what, what, as you got into this, what, what were some of the bigger challenges? I, I think uh, historically where we initially didn't pay enough uh, attention that was years ago was quality. Quality is very, very important, and we have invested a lot more uh, ensuring that our producers are meeting our quality expectations and they're delivering quality product for every order. Why it's so important? Because every order is unique. It's not like when, for example, you're ordering uh, headphones for your employees, you order a batch of 300, and you can be quite confident that all 300 will be identical. Uh, when these are e-commerce orders, it happens so that every other order consists of a different item of and consists of a different design. So ensuring quality is very, very important. And that was a challenging thing uh, years ago, but we have invested significantly and we are continuing to invest on some um innovative technologies uh, that we are uh, gradually rolling out, uh, how to make sure that uh, quality is top of, uh, top of, uh, on, on the top of our uh, minds and meets the expectations of the consumers. So from a, a software perspective, what, what were some of the challenges with this? I imagine taking artwork and resizing it and all the different formats and all that had to be a pain, but was the biggest challenge just figuring out how to integrate with all these different partners and how they integrate with their printing presses, all this kind of stuff, like a lot of integration work they had to do. Like what, what was the biggest challenge for you? I, I won't be able to tell you one challenge because I think every quarter there is a new, new big challenge uh, that we try to solve. Uh, everything what you mentioned, um, on the integrations, making an integration is not that difficult. What I think is difficult is to make sure that you have really great integration that works very smoothly, that product publishing is very quick uh, and doesn't cause delays, that pulling in orders from your sales channels happens quickly and doesn't cause delays and confusion. Similar with image, uh, image resizing, what you meant, uh, mentioned, for example, we, we, try, we make sure that <clears throat> uh, even though on, on, the, on the product listing you would see um, uh, one design, however, when we are printing those products, we want to make sure that if the t-shirt 
product is small, for example, extra small t-shirt would have extra small design printed on it. And when it's extra large t-shirt, then the design would be large. So making sure that we are scaling accurately, we are also using uh, other technologies on the back end to make sure that uh, the image quality is great and crisp and we achieve the best print quality output um, using some AI image enhancement tools. Um, we are we have recently implemented AI, AI image generation our, on our platform. So we have some core tools how to design and create an image. Um, you can create some texts, you can upload images. And we have also implemented a functionality that you can, from our platform, just add, add an, uh, a text prompt and we will generate images that you can then remove the background and print on the product that you want. Um, we have launched a TikTok integration uh, that is very exciting. Is That is the hottest platform out there, um, gaining more and more traction. And uh, we are glad that we can bring that to our users and, and creators. So uh, I would say that for me, entrepreneurship is all about dealing with challenges. For me, entrepreneurship is a roller coaster that, you know, you, you solve a problem, you feel like top of the world, and then there is a big, <laughs> big uh, slope down coming down from the roller coaster. And it, uh, you get new uh, experiences and new adventures, uh, new problems uh, that need to be solved. And I think it's universal across all the businesses. And uh, the bigger the business goes, it grows, the more complex and risky those problems become. So you mentioned your company was was primarily based in Europe. So my company, Full Scale, is based in the Philippines. We have hundreds of software developers. We do work for dozens of mm -hmm. other companies. I'm curious, what has your experience uh, been like, you know, having having your company in Europe? I mean, do you have, um, you know, it sounds like you, you live in Europe today. So tell us more about having like a distributed company and having employees kind of, where, where all do you have employees in Europe? Tell us, tell us more about that. Yeah. Uh, so we work as a remote company, even though we have a fancy office, um, not not too many people go to the office. And we, uh, because of COVID, we switched to remote first work and haven't really gone, uh, gone back to that. Uh, about maybe half, less than half of our employees are from uh, Latvia. That's the country where I, I was born and started the company. But a uh, big portion okay. of the employees are distributed all across Europe. I think last time we checked in, we had employees from 32 countries uh, all around the world, from wow. India, South America. We really don't care about your ethnic background and where you're coming from. What we try to look for is the best talent and best skill set. And as long as people are willing to work in the, um, the schedule uh, that in the European schedule, we are flexible with the, with where they are located. And, and many people actually, uh, start in one country and then they relocate to some warmer <laughs> and, and, and nicer place. Um, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I enjoy it myself and I'm happy that we can, uh, provide that, um, freedom to our employees. So, so how do you deal with that from a like HR and labor perspective? I mean, are these all your direct employees in these 30 countries and you have to deal with all the labor laws or are they more just like freelancers and you don't have to deal with, you know, Denmark has this crazy, you know, vacation time thing, whatever. Like, how do you, how do you deal with all that? Um, and at the very beginning, we, we tried out uh, the, the option, what you said about uh, being the, freelancers and contractors. However, we have switched that all or the vast majority, at least of our employees are uh, full time contract um, employees. We use um, a, a solution called employer of records. So we would have a third party company yeah. that has an entity in that target country that can 
uh, employ uh, somebody on behalf of us, therefore providing all the tax benefits and uh, yeah. insurance benefits and so on. Yeah, it's still got to be, th those services are very helpful, but you still have probably all sorts of weird challenges with uh, making sure everybody has the right vacation time and, and, you know, different, still different things you have to deal with in every country. So true, true, true. We, we leave it uh, up to, we, I think we don't try to centralize it too much. Uh, it's important that the manager who is managing um, that team is aware of like the specifics of the people in, in their team. And so yeah. far it have been working out uh, well. Yeah, th those em employee record, employee employment, whatever they're called, those systems are, have really cropped up around uh, since COVID. And uh, yeah. some of those companies are, are huge now. They're pretty expensive, though. Um, seems like it's a few hundred yes. dollars a month for every employee you have. So it, it adds up to be a lot of money. Uh, um, sometimes even more. Yeah. So what what do you see is is the future for you guys? What what is next? For us, future is all about enabling entrepreneurship, freedom for entrepreneurs. Uh, so we want to be the best solution for anyone to start business online and for uh, and therefore uh, to enable financial freedom, uh, enable uh, freedom to be their own bosses and, and freedom where they choose to work from. And I'm really glad that Printify uh, is helping to do that. And we are, are on that mission. And we all, our goals are to do it better, um, make it even easier for the merchants, widen the product spectrum so there would be more possibilities so we could service more people uh, that want to monetize uh, their audiences and, and make money online. And I, I see really the world changing from <clears throat> people buying big brand names to more and more buying from creators, influencers, uh, and I'm very delighted that we can help uh, many of those uh, sellers, merchants, um, entrepreneurs uh, to run their own businesses. Well, one of the things I realized for sure at 14 when I was screen printing is there was no difference in the t-shirt, whether it said Nike on it or Louis Vuitton or Tommy Hilfiger or Walmart. It was the same shirt. And it didn't cost any more money to print a Louis Vuitton on it than it would have to print Walmart on it, right? And that's kind of where you said today, you're like, what do you want to put on the shirt? Put whatever you want on the shirt. And so it could be exactly. something really cool, something unique, right? Not just like you can only pick Louis Vuitton or Walmart. Like somebody online can come up with some clever thing and you can put whatever you want on a shirt. But uh, exactly. at the end of the day, it's just a shirt. It's just a shirt. There's no difference. Exactly. Exactly. And, and maybe there is like a small, tiny difference, but it's really tiny. And I, I'm not big on, on brand names, but out of my curiosity, I was checking out some of those um, big fashion uh, stores um, on, on, on my last uh, vacation trip. And I, I don't remember if it was Balenciaga or Louis Vuitton. And it was like $1,000 for a t-shirt that just blew me away. Yeah. And blew me away. And it's the same T-shirt, as you say, like it's exactly the same T-shirt. And that also is something that we see among our merchants, that there are merchants who sell T-shirts for 15 bucks and there are merchants who sell the same T-shirt for $70. It's all about how you can position and market yeah. and uh, reach your audience and present the product. I mean, obviously there's a little difference in the quality of the, you know, the fabric that's being used, but at the end sure. of the day, it's like whatever logo you want to put on there. So how do platforms like yours deal with like copyright issues? Copyright is something that we pay a lot of attention to, and there are processes in place. Uh, I, I think it's, I might get, get it wrong, but uh, there is DMCA Act um, and there is uh um, procedure on the website that if there is any uh, infringement uh, that is noticed, 
And then there is a takedown notice and the response to all those notices uh, is uh, very seriously. And if we um, uh, identify that there indeed has been copyright infringement, then we will take down those, uh, those designs and uh, to the capability we can, we will also try to take it down from the e-commerce stores uh, as far as our hands can reach. I mean, is that one of the challenges of your guys' company is having to deal with that kind of policing of copyright stuff and looking at what all of your, your sellers are doing and making sure that, you know, they're not violating copyrights. Like somebody doesn't upload like a Mickey Mouse logo or whatever and try and print Mickey Mouse shirts or whatever. Like, is that like a never ending part of your guys' system has to help with? Indeed, this is, uh, this is a part that is, um, can be very challenging and where we are investing more and more in technologies, how we can automatically detect um, uh, some keywords that would be infringing um, and implementing also other systems uh, that would help to reduce any risks related to that. And a lot of, I think that the overall, the situation is improving, uh, that the merchants are becoming more conscious about um, what they are selling and they don't want to risk their stores being banned from the e-commerce platforms because it's so hard to build audience. It's so hard to build reputation online and right. to, to risk all your hard work and reputation just for some extra dollars and then have it taken away all like this when your store gets closed down. Uh, we just see that uh, merchants uh, want to have reliable business and do the right thing. And, and I, I, I don't have exact uh, statistics, but um, overall, I think if we compare the situation to like some 10 years ago, I think it's uh, improving a lot and we are investing uh, to make sure that we are doing all the right things. You know what? Sounds like a fantastic use case for AI, right? Where you could train it on all sorts of big company yes. logos and designs and prints and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And then, you know, when somebody That's uploads exactly how it, graphics how for it your system, and... you can, yeah. Yes. But it's it's still challenging because <clears throat> you, you can have, um, you can buy a license and you could be selling um, those designs True. and you can, you could be buy you could get that license from Shutterstock or you could have it from directly from the license owner or you could have it from a reseller of a license. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, you see Mickey Mouse all over, all over the internet and uh, I hope that 99% of that is legit. Um, and those people get those licenses in, in, in many, many different ways. Uh, but uh, there are, of course, always uh, some people who try to trick the system, and it's our job to uh, do all the right things to minimize such cases. Yeah, I could see that as being a, it's a never-ending kind of cat and mouse game, literally with the, the Mickey Mouse there. <laughs> it's a cat and mouse game of trying to, Trying to police, you know, I could see that as being a pain in the neck. Actually, my yeah. mom did this when I was little. Uh, she would print these sort of designs on like little kids' clothes and sold them at the flea market. And they were illegal designs that she like, however she got these things. That's what my mom did uh, when I was a little kid, sold them at the flea market. And uh, every once in a while, somebody would come through and confiscate her her little kid shirts that were illegally <laughs> printed. So yeah, my mom, uh, guilty. Did your mom get, did your mom get any, uh, uh, did your mom get any fines on that? No, no. They would just confiscate it or whatever. I mean, this was like 25 years ago, 30 years ago, but um, yeah, I first, firsthand experience with that one. <laughs> um, so I, I love that you're able to help entrepreneurs do this. I think this is great. And, and as there are more and more influencers out there, they're able to use, you know, a platform like yours to help monetize their following and, and what they're doing. Um, I had another great creator on, on the podcast here, not too long ago that I follow. Um, and he sells shirts. He has all kinds of custom shirts that he's done. It's like military related stuff. 
Uh, and they're super cool. Like every every month he has like some new shirt or whatever and he's selling. And so hopefully, you know, if he sells a few hundred of them, you know, you don't, you know if he sells a few hundred of them a, a month or a quarter or whatever, like it's, you know, free extra money for him. So I could see how your guys' platform could really, really, really be powerful for that. Um, do people use it for like fundraising or, or other use cases for this too? Oh my God, you can't, you, I, I... I can't, can't tell you how many use cases there are uh, for selling design merch online. Uh, there is okay. start, starting from printing your own company logo uh, to fundraising to selling, selling. And, and when we come to the subject of selling, like there are so many use cases when you could be a designer and create very beautiful art and sell that art on different marketplaces or your own store. It could be that you are a, a influencer uh, of certain topic like LGBT, for example, and so uh, this is just a way for your audience to support the movement uh, and and express themselves. There are so many small niches. I remember, uh, for example, female scuba divers or moms with twins, and there could be like hundred other versions of that or that plus specific to a certain city so there are so many use cases uh, of creativity and how you can creatively use uh, merchandise and and with certain designs to sell it uh, to customers that really like that and that feel passionate about it um, yeah there are so many possibilities i i, I love to check those stores and see uh, how much creativity there is. Well, I saw here that, you know, you guys have raised a lot of capital. You've got a lot of employees. It, it's, it's really turned into a big business. Um, I really appreciate you joining us today and, and telling us more about, you know, your background and, and the company. Um, as we round out the show today, is there any other words of wisdom you want to share, share with us or any other key lessons that we can learn from you today? I would for just for <clears throat> to to close it up. I would say for anyone uh, who is currently not uh, running their own business or is thinking about it, just just do it. Just try it out. Uh, I think that's the most important step. And the second most important step is that it's it's not a, a clear win. You need to invest effort. Uh, entrepreneurship is hard. It can take weeks or months uh, to succeed. But those who really put their in put in their effort, uh, those are the ones who succeed. And uh, Printify is one of those uh, options. How to start an uh, online business? I believe the best one, the easiest one, without any inventory. And uh, feel free to check out uh, Printify.com. And uh, thank you, Matt, so much for inviting me for being here. And I was glad to share my personal experience building, building a company. Absolutely. Again, this was James Burdigan's Printify.com. Uh, very, very, very cool company, very cool story. Um, if you guys need help building a software development team, definitely check us out at FullScale, FullScale.io. We do also have a new YouTube channel, so you can actually watch this on YouTube. Um, you can check us out on YouTube now, Startup Hustle. Uh, James, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Matt.